Astronomers just discovered two super Earth planets about 100 light years away. And the best news is, one of those two exoplanets might support life. We live in a fascinating era where astronomical knowledge is at its peak. So many scientists and engineers are constantly working on advancing exoplanetary research which will contribute to our understanding of the universe and the possibility of life existing somewhere else. For several years, astronomers and scientists have been searching for exoplanets to find answers to one of the most profound and thought-provoking questions humanity has ever asked. Are we alone in the universe? So, can these scientists who discovered these planets answer this long-standing question that baffled everyone's mind? Keep watching till the end to know more about this fascinating new discovery. For thousands of years, several philosophers and curious minds wanted to know if we were truly alone in this vast cosmos. But we are the very first generation to have the right kind of tools to finally find an answer to this question. As a result, we have been exploring the solar system for more than half a century now, and we have been studying exoplanets for at least two and a half decades. But even with all the efforts and scientific advancements that we have today, our understanding of planets both in our solar system and beyond is still not enough to understand other planetary systems in detail. So far, we have discovered more than 4,000 exoplanets, and none of them exist in systems that look much like our own solar system. Maybe our solar system might be something that's extremely rare, or maybe life in itself is extremely rare. To know whether a planet supports the kind of life that we know, it should be in the habitable zone. More on this in the later part of this video. But before discovering the very first exoplanet, astronomers thought that the planets that can support liquid water on the surfaces should be relatively common. But that was not the case, and to find out if there is any truth to this claim, we need more data from so many other planets which is why the current and future observation that we make on exoplanets is extremely important. Discovering and observing exoplanets will help us learn more about how the universe works and also how the Earth, Sun, and our entire planetary system came into existence. It will also give us insights about new elements or chemical compounds that would otherwise be totally alien to us. Astronomers already discovered more than 4,000 exoplanets that are orbiting distant stars. The very first two exoplanets orbiting a pulsar were discovered in 1992. Prior to these discoveries, the idea of existence of planetary systems other than our own was totally dismissed for centuries. So, we now know about thousands of planets around other stars, even though we still do not discover any life forms other than on our own planet. So, why were we not able to observe exoplanets before? Exoplanets are not easy to spot as they are far away from us. We are talking about several light years away. But that is not the only reason. Unlike stars, exoplanets don't shine with their own light, just like our own planet. These planets only shine when light is reflected from their local stars, making them extremely dim. Even the largest exoplanets are no exception, because they would be drowned in the light of their vastly brighter stars. That's the reason even the largest planets are too small to be glimpsed with optical telescopes. Before the first exoplanet discovery, astronomers assumed that exoplanets would resemble the planets in our solar system. But they were shocked to know that exoplanets can be very different from Earth with their position and orbits. The astronomers were clearly wrong when they thought that the solar system was a representative of several other planetary systems out in the universe. The truth is, our solar system may be an exception rather than a rule, because we have life in it and the others simply don't. At least, we don't have any proof for the existence of life. But that is about to change with this new discovery of two exoplanets, one of which might support life. This pair of rocky planets are orbiting a star named LP-899, which is also known as the Speculus II. 
scientists and astronomers are of the opinion that one of these planets is in the habitable zone and could arguably be the second most habitable exoplanet that we have discovered so far. This pair of planets is slightly larger than Earth and is orbiting in the habitable zone around the dim red dwarf star. We know very little about the LP899b planet, which we have already spotted before. Right now, our focus would be on the LP899c, which is called the Speculus 2c. Again, we don't know much about the Speculus 2c either, other than its size and the fact that it takes about eight days to orbit its star. The credit for discovering this pair of exoplanets goes to Amari Trioud at the University of Birmingham, United Kingdom, and his colleagues. The team now wants images from the James Webb Space Telescope to study more about these two planets with the intention to uncover the mysteries surrounding its atmosphere and the surface which would then give us more insights to planets' potential to host life considering the fact that the planet is in the habitable zone around the star, where the temperature is not too hot or too cold so that liquid water could exist on the surface. This is the criteria for a habitable zone considering the fact that one among the many factors that made the biosphere flourish on our Earth apart from the temperature is the presence of liquid water. But keep in mind that this criteria will only make sense for the kind of life that is very similar to ours. So how exactly did astronomers discover these new planets? Astronomers, when they observe a star, will be on the lookout for light dimming as a planet passes in front of the star. This might not always work as expected because it is somewhat difficult to work with a star that is as bright as our sun. Planets do not emit their own light as they only reflect light. Even then, if the star is a lot brighter, it's still difficult to spot these exoplanets with optical instruments. So, it's a lot easier if the host star is cooler and darker, like red dwarfs. The Speculus 2c has a radius of about 30 to 40 percent larger than Earth and takes about 8.4 days to orbit its star. It is also tidally locked, which means that it is permanent day on one side and it is always night on the other side. The planet orbits its star at a distance of about 10 times shorter than the distance Mercury orbits around the Sun. Even then, the amount of stellar irradiation it receives is still on the lower side. Such a condition might allow for the presence of liquid water on the planet's surface, provided that it has sufficient atmosphere with the right temperature. This has to do with the fact that the star LP899 is about 6.5 times smaller than the Sun and has a surface temperature half that of our star. Despite its differences, when compared to our planet, the team estimates that it appears to be the second most habitable planet that we have discovered so far after the TRAPPIST-1e outside the solar system, which was also discovered by Amari Triad in 2016. Back then, it was considered to be one of at least three potentially habitable Earth-sized planets orbiting a red dwarf called the TRAPPIST-1. Ever since then, four more TRAPPIST planets were identified, and the team confirmed that at least one of them were in the habitable zone, and TRAPPIST-1e is reported to have an Earth-like ocean world. The definition of a habitable zone is different for different stars. It depends on the properties of the stars these planets orbit. At present, researchers hope that the James Webb Space Telescope might be able to tweak this definition and reveal a lot more about the mass of these planets and confirm whether they might actually support life. The planets larger than Earth in size and closer proximity to its host star might simply imply a higher level of powerful radiation, which counts against its potential habitability. The problem with most exoplanets that we have discovered so far is the fact that they are not rocky planets. They are just gas giants or icy planets like Uranus and Neptune. In the end, it is extremely important to detect as many temperate terrestrial worlds as possible to study the diversity of exoplanet climates. This might help us measure how frequently biology has emerged in the cosmos. Most of the planets that we have discovered so far orbiting other stars are not the right candidates for life as we know it. They are either too hot or too cold, and the majority are made up of nothing but gas. The worst part is that relatively smaller terrestrial planets like our Earth are extremely difficult to detect because of which we just know about very few planets that are in the habitable zone with the right amount of radiation. Finding an Earth-like planet, especially one with life, has always been a challenge and we have a lot more to uncover. 
Maybe life might have evolved differently on other planets based on its atmosphere and chemical makeup. So we may not be able to use the same criteria for life on our planet when we are on the lookout for other life forms. We might be looking at the right thing with the wrong parameters, which could be the reason why we might never be able to find an answer to the question. Are we alone in this universe?